coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Ashley Park School will follow the trend of a Cole Omen school and close its doors at the end of June. This afternoon, I'm pleased to announce that the 2019 Western Canada Summer Games will take place right here in the city of Swift Current. As the village of Hodgeville stands in the distance of this prairie landscape, the uprooted rail line tells the story of the community's past and now uncertain future. The Eagles Hall was packed to capacity as residents of the RM of Swift Current attended a public forum to discuss the rural water pipeline. The spotlight was on Swift Current again with court proceedings against Graham James bringing in a media frenzy. Hi, I'm Carol Andrews and welcome to the special episode of Southwest TV News as we count down the top 10 stories of 2015. We'll kick things off at number 10 with a long-standing school here in Swift Current closing its doors for good and bringing together the community for a special celebration. As students complete another school year and look forward to the start of summer holidays, Ashley Park School will follow the trend of a Cole Omen school and close its doors at the end of June. To mark the 68-year history of Ashley Park School in Swift Current, a special celebration was recently held, bringing together students, staff, and former alumni. The afternoon celebration included carnival-style games, entertainment, and guest speakers. Swift Current Mayor Jared Schaefer is a former student of Ashley Park School and shared these memories with the crowd. It certainly tugs at the heartstrings that it's closing its doors, but uh, you know, as everybody alluded to, Ashley Park was all about the students and staff that works here, and uh, everybody, including the staff or the kids that did a great job today, will have those memories too. Ashley Park School also brings fond memories for former principal Kathy Robson who is now the curriculum coordinator for the Chinook School Division across southwest Saskatchewan. There was just an outpouring of support. There were lots of parents that always came in. Um, everybody just rallied around. And I think the fact that Ashley Park was situated right in a neighborhood, you always had that community feel. A lot of people walked here and, and any of the events that we had were just so, so supported. So the, the larger community and then I guess also the community within Ashley Park of the teachers and the students and and the staff that helped make that community. And as the students of Ashley Park School make the transition in September to O.M. Irwin School, they'll already be familiar with the new surroundings, as both schools have worked together over the past number of months. So our students have been over numerous times for tours, for concerts, special presentations, and then a lot of the Irwin students came to help today just to kind of develop a connection and a relationship. And it's been awesome. The kids are feeling really excited now. They've got to see their classrooms, and it helps because all of their teachers are going with them. So there's a comfort level there. Approximately 400 students from kindergarten through grade 8 will now be amalgamated into the O.M. Irwin School in Swift Current, coinciding with the Chinook School Division's restructuring process over the past year. In at number nine, Swift Current will be in the spotlight once again as the city hosts the 2019 Western Canadian Summer Games. Following one-on-one -on -one meetings with Western Canada Games Committee members and visits to Swift Current's various sports facilities over the past several weeks, 2019 will now be a big year for this Southwest community. This afternoon, I'm pleased to announce that the 2019 Western Canada Summer Games will take place right here in the city of Swift Current. The announcement was made earlier this week in downtown Swift Current with a number of local stakeholders in attendance. A sporting event which will bring financial benefits to the community and help build dreams of young athletes. It is a springboard uh, towards uh, you know, Canada Games and national teams so uh, so uh, looking forward to it. I, I, had the, uh, I had the opportunity as a as a younger person to uh, participate in Western Canada Games and uh, I just I know how much of a thrill it is when you're when you're young and participating. A proud achievement in Swift Current's history and Mayor Jared Schaefer credits the bid committee for their efforts while stressing the economic benefits which will benefit Swift Current and the surrounding area. 
Yeah, early estimates have about a $7 million economic injection into our community, so I think that's great. Obviously, uh, lots of shop and lots of tourist activities and, and whatnot, but uh, you know, for a community our size, this is our version of the Olympics. This is great. Lots to get excited about. Uh, athletes coming in from all over Western Canada with their families, so uh, another uh, huge feather in, in our cap, and our community should be really proud. To host the 2019 Western Canada Summer Games in Saskatchewan, the province is investing $1.5 million. Meanwhile, the City of Swift Current will contribute $600,000, plus an additional $300,000 in kind as the host community. A dollar amount which Schaefer is confident the city will be able to budget for. The budgeting will be uh, lots of time to get ready for that, and obviously a huge cash injection from the province as well, which is great. And with approximately 2,500 athletes from across Western Canada competing in 18 sporting categories, Schaefer feels all facilities are in place to host athletes and visitors to Swift Current. I think uh, they were actually really uh, impressed with uh, most of our facilities, including, you know, both at Diefenbaker as well as like Pelche. So uh, I know as, a, uh, as an organization, the games have a lot of uh, the equipment and whatnot ourselves. Uh, obviously, the new track is going to be a huge uh, help that that's uh, in there, but uh, I think our facilities are actually in pretty good shape. In order to prepare for the 2019 Western Canada Summer Games in Swift Current, a number of city officials will be traveling to Wood Buffalo, Alberta in August to get a first-hand account of the 2015 Summer Games. 2019 will mark the fifth time Saskatchewan has hosted the Western Canada Summer Games, with previous host sites in Prince Albert, Regina and Saskatoon. The last floats were just leaving as the first floats were coming back. It's awesome! Awesome! It's huge! I, biggest I've ever seen. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from David Anderson, Member of Parliament for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the management and staff of Pinnacle Financial in Swift Current. Wishing the citizens of Swift Current the very best this holiday season and into the new year from Mayor Schaefer, City Council and staff of the City of Swift Current. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the management and staff of Stuk Pharmacy and Leader. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Gus, Louie and George at the K Steakhouse and Motel. Book your Christmas party or New Year's celebration today. The rail line plays a vital role to many Canadian communities. And earlier this year, the village of Hodgeville saw the end of an era. As the village of Hodgeville stands in the distance of this prairie landscape, the uprooted rail line tells the story of the community's past and now uncertain future. Over the past several weeks, work crews have been on site pulling out the CP rail line, which spans approximately 50 kilometers from Hodgeville to Gravelberg and Mossbank. A process which the community knew would eventually happen after CP abandoned the rail line 10 years ago. Gary Wilson is the mayor of Hodgeville, and says the loss of the rail line adds to the ongoing challenge faced by many small communities. It's an entity that's gone, tax structure that's gone, uh, and it's just, uh, uh, it leaves you sort of like out in an oasis, you know. I mean, I know the railway has been dormant for a number of years, but there was, as long as it was there, there was always maybe some potential in the future, you know, to revitalize it, like I say, with tourism or the short line or whatever, but... And that's the sad part because once it's gone, you know, it's just another blow to a small village. It's gone and, uh, and everything's been done that could be done to try and keep it. So it's just uh, progress, they call it. A loss to the community, which is echoed by many on Coffee Row. I've seen it happen in Alberta too, uh, up at Smoky Lake. I've seen them pulling that out and it was very sad. And as the rail line is torn up piece by piece, two grain elevators remain along the track line. One privately owned and the Viterra Inland Terminal. The latter, which was once valued at $1 million. Now with the removal of the rail line, the terminal will likely be dismantled too, resulting in a loss of close to one quarter of the village's property tax revenues, which helps sustain infrastructure in Hodgeville, along with costs associated with operating the K-12 school. However, despite the loss of the rail line, Hodgeville's mayor remains optimistic with the complement of services that do remain in the village. We have some great people on council. This is a great community. 
everybody's just pulling together and we're doing what we can and uh, we'll survive. Gail Hefenowitz is a newcomer to the community and one of the local residents full of high hopes and aspirations for a bright future. She moved to Hodgeville almost two years ago after buying the old school and converting it into the new Hodgeville School Inn and Hub. Now having developed a steady clientele through work crews and other guests staying at her inn, Hepinowitz is working on another project to try and attract more visitors to Hodgeville. Saskatchewan flag was created here in Hodgeville by a design, it was designed by a teacher from Hodgeville. He was actually from England. He was coming here teaching for, I think, two years. He found out that it was his design while he was in the teacher's lounge, one of our rooms, and um, he found out that his design was the winner. He won $1,000 back in 1969. I want him to put one of the walls in our place and make it um, a memorial for him. Uh, I got a flag. Um, I sent it to England. He signed, and I'm waiting for it to come back, and we've got a wall that we're going to put that flag on and some of the other things that he sent me. And then outside the building, we want to paint a big flag saying Hodgeville, home of the flag. And whether or not being the home of the Saskatchewan flag will be enough to stem the tide, Gail and other community members are determined to make more people aware of Hodgeville's place in Saskatchewan's history. The town of Maple Creek is Southwest Saskatchewan's hub for holiday shopping and dining, all at a relaxed pace. For your convenience, enjoy late night shopping until 9 every Thursday throughout the month of December. Maple Creek, the perfect shopping and dining excursion. For more details, check out our website at oldcowtown.ca. Up next, residents of the RM of Swift Current brought forward their concerns during a heated public meeting. The Eagles Hall was packed to capacity as residents of the RM of Swift Current attended a public forum to discuss the rural water pipeline. In recent months, the subscribers to the pipeline have been notified of intended changes in service, which will include the installation of flow restrictors at each of the 211 subscribers' home or business. A discussion which raised some heated debate at the meeting. But why didn't you continue on negotiating with the city? Because you guys couldn't make a deal. Okay, that question's answered. When you ask a question and I answer it, don't ask the question again, all right? It's true, right? We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get through this. An overall move to water restrictions, which is not sitting well with these local residents. The system that we are operating under is a small holding tank in our house. And like what they said, approximately 100 gallons. I have about 70, like it's mine is 83 imperial gallons. And I have about 75 gallons of usable water. And so when it takes 75 minutes to put that back, you're only going to be using that water for your household. That's what they're trying to tell us. That's all it's designed for. That's all you're going to get to use it for. Now, if you want more water than that, you're going to have to figure out how to put a bigger tank in. And like they said, at a gallon per minute, you're only going to get 1,440 gallons. So the most you're ever going to get in a 24-hour period to use, whether you want to water trees or whatever, you know, any other use for it would be 1,440 gallons. So it causes significant change to your current situation. According to the RM, the original infrastructure for these subdivisions was not designed to handle such growth. And now the RM finds itself in a desperate situation to address this problem sooner than later. No, the line isn't big enough to, 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 for the, us to supply the water. If, if we do what our engineers tell us we'll have to do, we will twin the line and run more volume up there so those people all get water. But we don't want to run short and we're also planning ahead but we would build the line a little bit bigger so that if, if there was any more uh, development over there we could handle that you know that we hate to turn development away one of those subdivisions experiencing rapid growth and demand for more water is the work and teen area and therefore the short-term solution is to twin the water line an expansion which will cost between 280 and 300 thousand dollars a bill at this point in time, which is unclear 
as to who will be left to pay the balance. Each of the subdivisions that were built, the west side, which where I live on the west side, we all paid the amount of money that it took to develop that. The first 40 subscribers, we were, we were uh, 7,000 and some dollars, and that's what got that new one in. When the east side went in on by the research station, those subscribers all pot, put money into the pot so that could be developed. So then our opinion is if there's new expansion required, why are they not footing the bill for if there's an expansion required to supply them with the amount of water they want? Why are they not paying for that then? We paid for ours. Points of interest which the RM says it'll take into consideration during future discussions. I could give you my opinion, but I, I, I wouldn't because council is, when we come out with a, with, with a, a decision, it's everybody. When would you hope that decision to happen? Well, that's a good question. How soon, I mean, we just had a meeting yesterday, so it won't be for another month. Southwest TV News will continue to follow this story as it unfolds. In at number six, former victims of hockey coach Graham James made their way to a Swift Current courtroom for a sentencing in June. The spotlight was on Swift Current again with court proceedings against Graham James bringing in a media frenzy. As the latest victim of sexual assault by Graham James to come forward, waited inside Queen's Bench Court, Todd Holt and Sheldon Kennedy made their way in to show support for a fellow victim. A process which has been a long road since the latest victim came forward in September of 2013. It's a two-year process and from, uh, from the time we stepped forward to the time that we actually come to this point, which it's quite a process. Um, so every time there was a court date or every time there was something going on, um, I wasn't able to speak out. I wasn't able to say anything because of the ban. We need to be here to show up for one another and just be present and not having to say any words or just to be present and, and, and also um, to show society that, that this issue is uh, uh, of huge importance uh, and, and has a huge impact on our youth. A joint submission by the Crown and the defense was presented to Justice Timothy Keene, followed by a recap of the sexual assault against the former Swift Current Bronco player between January 1st, 1990 and August 31st, 1991 by his then hockey coach, Graham James. Following a guilty plea entered by 62-year-old Graham James via video conference call from a Quebec prison, a victim impact statement written by the latest unidentifiable male victim was read aloud in the courtroom by Justice Timothy Keene, which included a reflection of his broken dreams of becoming an NHL player, suffering in silence with his pain for 22 years, and calling Graham James his tormentor and demon. The judge then sentenced Graham James to an additional two years in prison to the five he's already serving for sexual assault charges against Todd Holt, Theo Fleury, and another unidentified victim. In addition, a lifetime ban on firearms, registration with the National DNA Bank, lifetime registry with the National Sex Offender Registry, and is prohibited from seeking employment or volunteer opportunities with any agency working with youth under the age of 16. A court sentencing which had the following response from the victim in his own words. I don't have to worry about Graham James anymore. I can look forward and know justice has been served and just look forward to the future. And despite a verbal apology to the victim, the Swift Current Broncos, and the city of Swift Current, few in the courtroom believe James's statement. Uh, he's an individual that deceived uh, um, you know, a lot of people in this community that were hockey fans, that were supporters of the team, uh, that put their trust in him. He deceived families of young men that played here, and of course, we all know the uh, horrific deceit that he placed on the players. So, um, uh, I don't know how to respond, but, uh, um, you know, I think it feels pretty hollow because when, you, when you're when you in there and you hear the extent of the abuse that happened to the uh, to the kids and, you know, even growing up in this community to see the, the amount of deceit that happened, uh, you know, throughout Swift Current and throughout the Southwest. And, uh, the victim was talking about in his uh, impact statement about uh, the fear of Graham. I mean, you know, we got to remember that when I was abused, Graham James uh, threatened us with a gun. 
Graham James was a physical presence. Graham James used to let air out of people's tires right in front of us and throw shopping carts on people's uh, cars in the parking lot in the shopping mall. And as another chapter closes in the Graham James saga, with more time spent behind bars for his transgressions, Todd Holt offers this encouragement for others who may be a victim of sexual assault or other abuse. Like I just said, it's, you're, you're never alone anymore. We're all in this together. Whether you've been a part of it or you're, you're not a part of it, you know what, we all know someone who's been involved in it, whether they've not come out yet or not, but it's, it's an epidemic that we need to start carrying in this country. On behalf of everyone here at Cypress Health, I would like to extend our best wishes to you and your family during this festive season. This is a time for family and friends to get together and enjoy the spirit of the season. The holidays are a time to reflect upon where we've been and those things for which we're grateful. Our wish for you is that 2016 will bring you great health, happiness and prosperity. We are looking forward to many positives throughout the coming year. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year from, from the, the Cypress Health region. region. Well, this concludes part one of our countdown of the top 10 stories of 2015. I hope you'll join us here next time as we make our way to number one. From all of us here at Southwest TV News, we wish you and yours all the best in the new year. I'm Carol Andrews.